My name is Rhapsody. Welcome back to Monster Train Herzl's Workshop. We're going to be continuing with our crown quest. We've got the Melting Remnant as our primary clan, specifically with Recta Flicker as our leader, and then we have the Hellhorn secondary. Uh, I'm thinking that if we have the possibility of getting Recta Flicker with the Dark Reforming path, then maybe we want access to the Queen's Implings so that we can kind of build up like a heavy, heavy kind of like re-summon, summon, 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 kind of just constantly Queen's Impling, nuke the front line kind of build. Uh, missing out on the torches is a little bit rough, especially early on when the torches can actually buy you the ability to hit the collectors in the back line or, you know, any other target often in the back line early. Uh, so we'll reassess whether or not we want to do this with the exiled or non-exiled starter cards for the Hellhorned ongoing, but for the moment we'll try this. Double Entombed Explosive, single Sacred Wicks, and double, uh, double Vent in the base deck. That's actually going to help offset the previous negative theory I was talking about. Units cost negative two, seems pretty easy here. Especially playing these clans. I mean, like, all the imps now cost zero. They used to cost zero ages ago, but now they all cost zero. Like, almost the entire deck is zero. Zero, 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 and then these are X costs. So, I think it's pretty clear why this is the choice we wanted to go for. We've also got the Burn Bright Rector Flicker here, which, like, we only have one reform in the entire deck. Now, I did say previously, Again, in the patch notes that I was talking about, the changes that were introduced for Herzl's workshop and a patch prior to that as well. Um, that patch note analysis video is still in the description down below if you're still interested, but uh, I had a fairly large stint where I was talking about the increased burnout timers on a couple of the basic cards for Melting Remnant. The Hallowed Drippings, Wicklash, and... Can't remember the name of the last one, but it's the Healing one. Uh, all of those had their burnout timers increased by roughly 50%. That is to say, the extra burnout they add to a unit when applied to that unit by roughly 50%. And that is transformative to your ability to take Recta Flicker here, the, specifically the Burn Bright Recta Flicker. However, with so many minions in the deck, all of them costing zero and a harvest plus one plus fifth, like, it's, it's just Accumulator, right? We just take Accumulator and then we look for Reform. Non plus enemy units gain four additional damage, unit draft. Yeah, the four additional damage really ought not matter to us because we're just going to be kind of like hopefully using imps to chump block and nuke at the same time. So something like this. I'm going to get a drake on the top floor just in case. <laughs> Told you. All right. Let's get these harvest triggers. Yeah, now those are good. Yeah, it's a, just a good-looking steward there. I don't know what's. I don't know what it is about it. Just some, something that's uber. Ooh, look at that vent! It's a good vent right there. Good work, right to Flicker. Purifying cleanse. That's the other one I was talking about as well. Thank you. Uh, molded here, right? We start taking more of them. I like it. Welder Helper is super great here, especially if we can get, like, Endless and Burnout on it. Molting Imp is nice. I would probably lean towards Molting Imp, honestly, if I didn't have the vents, but I do have the vents. Um, you know, I want my I want my own floor alongside the Rector Flicker to be units that routinely die. So buffing those units isn't really going to be helpful for us. Do I want to run a second floor with a paraffin fog? I I look, I do need a second floor, don't I? Cause how does this floor deal with big dudes, right? Rector Flicker doesn't scale fast enough to deal with big dudes by itself. I mean, neither does the paraffin and thug, but. Let's, let's live in fantasy land here for a second. So the Paraffin Thug would then have a Remnant Frontliner with a Merchant of Steel as well. The Paraffin Thug can get, like, uh, you know, your multi-strike, your, your quick, your plus 10 damage. It, it, can, it, it can do work. It can certainly do some work. It would need a Frontliner provided by the Remnant Barrier, though. Would it? Not necessarily. Okay, okay. I feel actually a little, little more confident about taking this Paraffin Thug now. Uh, as for the choices here, though, it is possible I still want to go for the Hellhaunt unit because, I mean, Hellhaunt units, we can get 
I mean, we can't get Transcend Imp, right? Transcend Imp counts as a rare spell for this class. Yeah, Transcend Imp's a rare spell. Uh, so... We could get... Deranged Brute. And then try and go for, like, a, a Rage stack kind of situation. Really? Like, honestly, I'm trying to find ways to justify going over here so that I can look for Holdover on the Molded, so that I can look for Consume Removal on the Sacred Wicks, so that I can look for plus 10 damage on the Vents. So in the next area, we are going to a Merchant of Steel next to a Hellhorn Banner. That's guaranteed. Right? Like, what are we going to have that we want to Hell Vent before then? Nothing. Unless we go over here and get Molded. So honestly, like... Both of these paths down here rely on me going to the Merchant of Magic here. I had to look two steps ahead to see where I actually had to go. There's the holdover. There we go. We'll put holdover on Molded, and then we're going to reduce its cost, and then we're also going to go here, and we're going to dupe it. Consumer of Crowns. Yeah. I mean, it's Consumer of Crowns, and it's Demon Friend here as well, though. But it's Consumer of Crowns, right? It's just Consumer of Crowns. Yeah, it's just Consumer of Crowns. <laughs> Oh, all works out in the end. At the start of battle, enemy units appear on each floor. I really want the money here. How desperately do I actually need it? Because the second floor is going to haste past. Honestly, as long as I draw a vent in the first two turns, I'm okay. And even if I don't, I'll lose some HP, but I'll still be okay. Vent, 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 vent. No. <laughs> vent. <laughs> I needed vent. <laughs> uh, okay. Paraffin thug on this floor. Hell yeah. Get that collector. Um, that top floor is only representing seven damage. So it could be a lot worse. I'll just reform whatever the heck. There we go. Save one damage there. Oh, hell yes. Oh, I actually know the play here. Shiny Steward. We wait. We lose this whole floor. Happy. Happy to have done this. Right? Then you haste past the next floor. Oh, you're kidding me, Ak. The shiny steward actually gets the kill. Wait, hang on. No, but the paraffin thug isn't going to be able to do attack yet. No! I thought the shiny steward was going to die. No. Uh, I thought that was going to be so clever. Uh, Whiplash, resin removal, another intuned explosive. I mean, I think... I think I can do that with the deck that I already have active. Take a Fledgling Imp as well for a simpler reason. Ooh. Apply Quick or Trample. You can get Quick in a shop. You can't get Trample in a shop. Trample on that Consumer of Crowns seems real good. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> Take the trample then. Then we go Hellvent and dupe the Molded. So now we have the Dark Calling Path of Rector Flicker, but it's in these cards instead of in actually the character. <laughs> this is going to be our hurdle. Um, with all the clergymen getting the extra damage, I think I need to set up high. It will also give me the largest amount of time possible to find my frontline units and such. 
can use the Queen Nimblings and the Entombed Explosives to shred out the frontline units on both floors. Okay, we're going through this. So Paraffin Thug goes there, and then the Dreg. So we will take 10 damage, but... I mean, at the very least, get somewhere with it. Okay, let's molded a drag. Drop two Queen's Implings here in the midline and have two clergymen dead. So you get to the next floor and then two of them die as well. You take as little damage as possible. I like that. And then make sure to cast another molded. Bottom floor, just get the excess units out. Exactly what I was talking about as well. We have the ability to put the Entombed Explosives down to take out the Forged Disciples on those front lines. Um, let's just keep back, uh, getting back the Queen Simplings if we can, though. I do want units to get to the top floor, so I actually have Harvests that can trigger off up here, so I'm not going to kill all of them now. Yeah, this is the problem when Harvest Triggers don't go off, right? You're just a live Rector Flicker. I hope you appreciate that. I'm going to give Trample to the Paraffin Thug as well, because it looks like on this floor, it'll be able to trample a couple things. Give me a little bit of extra money that way. Uh, Okay, it'll only be able to do that, though, if I kill that and then use this Burnout here so that the Forged Disciple doesn't go to the top line. The health on that Rector Flicker is not making me feel uh, comfortable at all here. I am starting to panic. This is officially me panicking. Okay. I mean, I guess it's just entombed explosives all day here, right? I can get five extra health on the Rector Flicker every time I kill something in front of it, so I'll kill a couple entombed explosives there as well. Okay, I can use well to help it to get a bit extra, but this is still not looking good on that floor yet. Explosive, explosive, put a drag in the back line and then an imp there. I mean, it's not nothing. And that's the most damage I can do. Come on, be enough, be enough, please. No! <laughs> Come on! Runs too short. We got to do another one. Not letting it happen like that. Double draft. Wicked blaze in the base deck and double fortify. Ooh. Ooh is all I got to say about this one. Friendly units gain plus two damage on slay. That seems like it's going to be very good for those drafts. Dark calling. Resolve. Reform two units and apply an additional plus five. So that is a way to just constantly get those drafts back. Yes, please. Now we look to make Dark Calling zero cost and hold, or oh, one cost and hold overall. Uh, enemy in center with armor 10. That's going to make it so hard to get through any of their, their stuff. Okay. I need to set up as high as possible, but I want the resolve to go off this turn for the Rector Flicker, but it, it, it can't if I set it up higher because it's dazed. So we'll just set it up high and eat the losses, I guess. Hey, at least we get the Wicked Blaze here, though. 
So we even get the ability to kill the midline. Block with those and then get another draft there. Have the draft die. Like, rec this is the problem with doing Rector Flicker in specifically the Dark Calling path of Rector Flicker in anything above Ascension 10, Covenant 10, rather. Friendly units on the top floor enter with Dazed. You want this unit to be as high as possible so that they, you know, you have the ability to respond to the majority of things so that you have the ability to grow its floor as much as possible. Um, so that obviously it's not vulnerable to the units that are just constantly coming in and actually killing it. Uh, but you also want it to be lower than the top floor so that you can actually get its resolve trigger off after other things have burned out. Like, if these drafts were on the top floor this turn, they would burn out, then the Rector Flicker on the next floor would activate, and I'd get them back. So the, the ordering is always so wonky with this. I find, at least. Like, this could have been two drafts if it wasn't for the ordering. We got a draft back. Good. Burn out three on it as well. That's even good earth. Yeah. And that's pretty much how I expected it would go with the extra damage there at the end. So yeah, we want to try and work around Rector Flicker being on floor two if we can do that at all. Molten Encasement, Draft, and Formless Child. These are all really good. Formless Child ever brings back a draft, and we just, uh, just, just, just have a great time. Unfortunately, it'll be really hard to coordinate that, especially with the Rector Flicker already bringing back random units. So I don't think, excuse me, I don't think I'm going to take the Formless Child. There's also another draft here. I'm honestly not opposed to taking another draft. Drafts are not a priority draw unit, so if I want them early, I have to have a couple of them in the deck. There's also the moment encasement here. Extinguish, apply two stealth to friendly units. That would be a way, a, not an awfully difficult way as well, to actually start getting enough stealth on my characters to defend them. For the sake of the uh, molten encasement, though. I don't want to miss out on the opportunity. Hidden Passage, tie some Climb. I like Hidden Passage. Hmm. Merchant of Magic, Forgotten Boons, Merchant of Magic, Hellhorns. Gotta go to a Merchant of Steel and a Remnant Banner, right? Wickless Tycoon. Do I really want a Wickless Tycoon in this deck? I have so many minions is the thing. It's like, I've got everything competing for the same... You know, 14 slots of capacity on the field at any one time. Quick. So good. Paraffin Enforcer. Okay, we now need to think, actually, because the Paraffin Enforcer means that we might want to play differently with respect to the drafts. So, if we get this Paraffin Enforcer, there's another Remnant Banner down here that could be a Lady of the Reformed, in which case it's Lady of the Reformed frontline, Paraffin Enforcer behind, and then Draft Draft in the back line, and then we just like set them up and let them go. We can also just make the Paraffin Enforcer tankier and put it in the front. I'm actually happy with that a lot. And now I don't want quick on the backliners because then the paraffin, uh, the they don't benefit from the the paraffin also. Uh I could re-roll, but I don't want to see multi-strike and not be able to take it. So that means I have to find a way to support my frontliner there. I already know how we can do it. We can use the molten casement to do it. The start of battle, enemy units be on each floor. Uh, yeah, this is going to cost me HP, but I need the money. Okay. 
So you can see, because it happened on the higher floor, we actually get the draft back this round. Perfect. We even get the collector. Hmm. Okay, we're going to have a lot of units burning out on that floor this turn. So I need to manage my resummon pile. There we go. This is come back with Burnout 3. That's already more than enough, I believe, there. So I'll just put a different frontliner in charge. Thankfully, it scaled fast enough. Purifying Cleanse. Hey, that is not a bad way to keep a, a Paraffin Enforcer in the front line. It's also not a bad way to try and keep some of the drafts alive. I would love a Wicklash as well now. I'd really, really appreciate a Wicklash. Well, to help it uh, help support the health of a frontliner, even if I don't have the ability to help them otherwise. Merchant of Magic. That holdover purifying cleanse would be pretty ridiculous. Or even double stack, to be honest. Holdover. Okay. Let's actually go with the reroll here. There's the double stack, but I don't care about it. I'm going for plus 10 health there. Another cost reduction on a... Hidden Passage. It's none of these. Are, none of these even match anything that I want to do even slightly. It's very easy to avoid those. Ascends and descends. I so rarely take these anymore. Am I just completely ignoring something great here? I don't really have many things in my deck that require my energy, so sure, let's just take a kill a unit. Something that just kills a unit, because sometimes killing a unit can be good. I know, it's, it's an arcane strat, but from time to time, it can be the right thing to do. There's two correct things to do in this game. Number one is pick the draw rune. Number two is kill units. In exactly that order. Keep the dregs. Quite literally. Okay, I have only one in the consume pile right now, so if I only put down the draft, I'm guaranteed to get the draft and the other one back. I'm trying not to overfill the consume pile with things that I don't want to revive because I gotta revive the same. Wait! Dra oh, right, because there was another unit drying. Um, yeah, because i got to make sure that I get the right units. This, this sucks, though. The Rector Flicker are about to die. Uh, Shiny Steward saves it on the bottom line, though. Perfect. Didn't get back to draft that turn because the draft ain't dead. It's a great reason not to have gotten it. It's back. A draft, but not the draft, but it's fine. We have the other one. The other reform there.
And now, in fact, I'm going to start putting the extra burnout time on other units. Also going to just delete that. Great. <sighs> Here's the haunting thing. Do I go capacity? Bounty stalker? I don't know if Bounty Stalker is where I want to go with this. There's a Hellvent over here that allows us to dupe any card that's not the champion. That Purifying Cleanse seems like a really good dupe right now with how we're running this deck. And it simplifies the deck so much because then the Welder Helper and the Molten Casement, at least until the final fight, I don't need to rely on them being my scaling tools, but in the final fight, they come back with a vengeance. I would, I would need more health on the Parapent Enforcer, just another plus 25. Takes it to 75, the incoming damage, single round can be like 60. We heal 50 around. We occasionally just subvert it with the frontline unit as well. What are we not able to do at the moment? Literally, the only thing that we have trouble with right now is not drawing our drafts early enough. We're going to skip. We're also going to take draw. We're also going to cut cards from the deck. I don't want to tell it. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. It's, I think, it's correct, though. Uh, the the one period that's making me feel like, I don't know, I don't know about it, is when the, the Rectifligger has to stand alone on the bottom floor with only three capacity. It's not going to be super common. The thing is, if I don't get those drafts out early, I already lose. And I cannot get them as mana units. So increasing my draw and cutting cards from my deck is all that I can do. It's quick, plus 25 there as well. Okay. We're officially not going to be taking another remnant unit. We'll be cutting two of the train suits from the deck almost certainly here. Putting the plus 25 on, I feel, the Parapin Enforcer. I think we actually will go with the floor that I was talking about. Um, now, we didn't dupe in this area. Got a Merchant of Steel and Unstable Vortex on the other side. We'll probably go for another double removal there. Like, the removals are really, really important right now. Um, so, we will only have the one Purifying Cleanse in the deck for the moment. But we have many more opportunities to dupe it later. Don't want quick. <laughs> I'm also going to go with my first paid cut. And in fact, I'm going to pop a strength stone on another draft. <clears throat> it doubles their damage output when they are first put down. It's it's worth it. 30-30 on this Rector Flicker now. Makes it a little bit more responsive. A little bit uh, tankier. A little bit more useful. It's fine for... It, it's always fine for the sick of... Well, it's usually fine, at least. For the sick of to start on the battlefield here. What are they going to do? Yay, we got a draft back. Hmm. I'm gonna play that there just to get rid of that welder helper as soon as I can. Just wondering how I kill the Collector in the very, very back. Put out a Dreg and then try and kill the Dreg myself later or just let it burn out. 
think I do have to do that. That's fine. I'm okay with doing what has to be done. That is the line that every villain says before they do something horrific, though, so I recognize the, the territory I'm playing in there. Oops. I do what has to be done. That's why I must murder this entire village of just babies, exclusively babies, specifically, especially defenseless babies. We know that babies are typically quite defenseless. These are even less defensive babies. But I'm doing what must be done. Yeah, yeah whatever, Kylo. All right. Spirits, queens. Um, I guess I can throw some units on this floor. In fact, it's a good idea to throw at least one or two. Yeah, because then we get the kill clip guard in the back line already. Love it. Uh, we hard wait. There's <laughs> so many trash units in this deck we need to cut. <laughs> Oops. That's fine. I can give the armor to that one. There we go. Actually, very happy to have the armor there. Man, these are two good units to just be constantly reforming. We scale so high, it doesn't matter that our burnout is pretty low on all of the characters. But I worry that we're going to get to the final fight and then realize, uh-oh, we've been dead for a while. Uh-oh. Uh, fatal melting, deal damage to enemy units equal to three times the number of friendly unit deaths in this battle. That does happen quite often. Um, we reform pretty much constantly. And we don't really have much AoE, so seems like a good pick. Impish Scholar. Doesn't have anything good that it can bring back to us right now. Branding right is kind of costly for this deck. Yeah, it's pretty costly for this deck. But it is also a giant amount of defense, and double stacking it becomes even gianter. I'll take one copy. I'm just going to bloat my deck and then stack my deck. Always at the wrong times. <sighs> Actually, I think I will go to the Merchant of Magic here for some consumer. Well, no, not keen on that, but we will go at least. Negative costing on the branding right. Reroll. Hold over. Great. There are so many good things here to hold over. Wicked Blaze is obvious. In fact, Wicked Blaze is so obvious that I have to do it. Let's also decrease the cost of Fatal Melting before removing another card. Get that final shiny steward out of here. I don't want to see that handsome mug again. Oh my god, just plus one capacity on each floor? Plus three capacity on a random floor? It's plus one on each floor, plus three on a random... I, th I think it's plus one on each floor. It... it... it it's... We finally took a capacity gem, y'all! Granted, it looks a hell of a lot like a hammer, but I confirm to you it is a gem because it says plus one capacity on each floor. And that's what the, uh, the other one says as well. <clears throat> that's what we're all going to believe. Enemy in the sense with armor 15, that's fine. They're still going to die to the exact same attacks as they would otherwise. Uh, except they won't die to the initial placement of multi imps, that's it. The only big difference. I mean, those dregs just die early if I do that, right? I'm not even going to play them. Okay. 
Okay, there are a few things here we can easily do. So, 30, Daisy for three turns. We're probably going to try and put that Clipped Guardian up there with the the Polyclaw. We're also probably going to move... In fact, we are definitely going to move you from the front of that line to the back of this line. Got two different drafts in the bottom of the deck that we're definitely trying to draw right now, so... Hopefully that starts turning out well. We'll trigger Wicker Blaze's Holdover, and then I'm just going to send you up. Yes, you will deal some damage to us, but significantly less than it otherwise would have been. You are kidding me! Both of the drafts are in the exact bottom of the deck. Gotta play the Wicked Blaze so that I start ha holding it over because I need the drafts back. <laughs> so, like, I kind of don't really have a choice here. At least in terms of this one. Okay, so we got a single draft? Oh, God. It's just awful. I want too many units to die on that bottom floor because I do want the reforms. You've got sweep. I just... I just don't know what I get to do against you. I was hoping I've scaled enough. Okay. Okay, okay. So it looks like yes. And it wasn't that close. Uh, engulfed in smoke. Sacred Wicks. Take a Sacred Wicks. Then... Easily just take the money on that one. We don't scale our armor. That's not what we do. Do, do, do. No dupes. More cuts, please. Double stack? Mm, double stack on a branding ride is 40. Mm, cost reduce the fatal melting. Cut a... The Queen's Imblings at least do something against the Frontliners on summon, so we'll cut a drag. Oh. Friendly units gain Rage 3 whenever they lose a stack of Burnout, or grant plus 3 stacks of Burnout each time it's applied. Plus three stacks of burnout each time it's applied is going to make it hard for me to kill the drafts in the first place, sometimes. I'll take Fade's first blade. So I don't want to bloat my deck, but... But... We have two dead weights in the deck. If we took Penitent Remains, when summoned, friendly units get plus one for every Blight card in the deck, which gives plus 10 damage because of the multi-strike on the drafts every time I summon them. Every time I summon them. So if I summon them multiple times, they're getting another plus 10, another plus 10, another plus 10. This is significantly worse than just the Wax Relic. And also I have so much scaling at the moment. No, no, no. That makes me stronger in something I'm already strong in and weaker in something I'm already weak in. It's, it's not the solution to this problem for us. 
Go blah blah blah. Rage. It's now just down to whether or not I play the Branding right or start getting the Wicked Blaze holding over. I think I play the Branding right. Don't even get an impact for that turn. <clears throat> so we're just dead now? Hang on. No, 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 no. That unit's too large. We need more time. Unit's so big. Um, so I guess the Enforcer has to go on the top line, but that means if it's summoned on the top line, then no draft can be summoned on the right turn to attack with it. Oof. Guess that means I go this direction. Get a Queen Zimpling back. Start trying to work units down, I guess. Um. I don't know how this is going to work. There you go. So we were always just going to watch this Clipped Guardian go to the top line with that much rage. Just like no matter what we did. Because it summoned on round one with 105 HP and then 70 blocks in front of it. So yeah, I, I just do not have anything I can actually do. That's really disappointing. <laughs> I always knew the problem with this deck was whether or not it will be able to scale fast enough, but... Well... Yeah, there we go. I... <laughs> Usually they're not mean enough to give you 105 in the, the front line, save that fight. Uh, on the first round? Especially with a 70 health blocker in front. In fact, even the fights at the very end don't summon enemies in the first round that have 180 HP. Ah. <laughs> Why? All right. Well, I, I know I didn't get the run summary of the, uh, the run that we did earlier in this episode, but I'll pull out the run summary of this one. <sighs> grumble. Just grumble. Having the drafts be such an important unit for like burnout builds and molded, sorry, and reform builds as well as like, like burnout loss, rage kind of like all, all of these kinds of builds seem to have a very large place in them for the draft. But because they aren't a priority draw, it's so hard to use them that way. Like I was getting halfway through this run and I was thinking, oh my God, I'm finally actually, I'm seeing it. I know how to do this now. Um, and then reality came along and <laughs> smashed me straight in the face. Parties Magazine, Brian. Just Parties Magazines and Brian. What a good night that sounds like. That's uh, that's going to have a playlist in the description down below. R sorry, that's going to have the, uh, the link at the top of the description down below so that you can play the run for yourself if you would like. Hopefully you've been enjoying yourselves. This has been Monster Train. My name's Rhapsody. Playlist in the description down below with all my content of the game, past, present, future, and hopefully we'll see you next time.